A few months ago, my cousin visited Vyberg, a pretty old town next to the water in Denmark. He has never been back, and he will never go back, and I am going to tell you why. In 1726, there was a terrible fire. But I am not writing about the history of Vyberg. I only want to tell you about the Golden Lion Hotel. My cousin, Mr. Anderson, chose this hotel because it was a beautiful old building from before the fire. Mr. Anderson is a professor of history, and he is very interested in old things. He was in Vyberg because he wanted to study some old church books and papers. He went into the Golden Lion Hotel and spoke to the landlord. I would like a large room because I need to study in there too. He told the landlord. Number 17 is big and it's quiet, said the landlord, showing him the room. But it's too dark at the back of the hotel, said Anderson. The landlord showed him two more rooms at the front of the hotel, number 12 and number 14. Both rooms were big and bright and had three windows onto the street. Anderson chose number 12. In hotels in Denmark, it is normal to find the names of all the guests on the wall in the hall. While he waited for dinner, Anderson looked at these names next to their room numbers. He saw that the Golden Lion did not have a room number 13. That's interesting. Anderson thought. Is that normal in Denmark, too? Because the number 13 is unlucky? I might ask the landlord about it tomorrow. That night, Anderson got into bed at 11 o'clock. Then he remembered that his book was in his coat, outside the dining room. So he went quietly downstairs to get it. But when he was back in the dark corridor outside his room, he could not open the door. He heard someone inside. Of course. Anderson thought. This is the wrong door. But which room is this? He looked at the number and saw that it was number 13. But there isn't a number 13 in this hotel. He thought when he was back in his room. And it's strange. My room looks smaller than before. But maybe I just think that it's smaller because I'm very tired. The next morning, Anderson went to the library. He studied old books and papers all day and he read about Vyberg 200 years before the fire. At that time, in the 1500s, the church owned many of the houses. A man called Nicholas Frank Ken lived in one of these houses. He was not a good man. Some people even wrote that he sold his soul to the devil. Franken wanted to use black magic, and he paid for this power with his soul. Anderson was interested in this house, but he could not find the address. That evening, Anderson ate dinner at his hotel again and went upstairs to his room. In the corridor, he remembered something. I forgot to ask the landlord about number 13. He thought. But is that room really there, or did I make a mistake last night? He looked for the door, and there it was, number 13. He listened for a minute outside the door and jumped when he heard a noise inside. Anderson hurried into his room and was surprised again. His room looked smaller tonight, too. But it doesn't matter. He thought. I will ask the landlord for a different room tomorrow. Then he looked for his suitcase, but he could not find it. It was not by the wall at the end of the room. Maybe one of the servants has moved it. I will speak to the landlord in the morning. Anderson thought, and he took out a cigarette. He walked to the window on the right and looked out at the dark street. There was a tall building opposite with a wall and no windows. Anderson could see his own shadow on this wall, and on the left of his shadow he could see the shadow of the man in the next room, number 11. On the right, he saw the shadow of the person in number 13. The man looked tall and thin, and he was wearing something on his head. The man has a red light in his room because there's red light on the wall behind his shadow. Anderson thought. 
Suddenly, there was a noise in the street, and the man in number 13 quickly stepped away from his window. Anderson put his cigarette down by the window and went to bed. The next morning, when Anderson sat up in bed, he saw his suitcase at the end of the room, and he was happy to see that his room looked bigger again in the light. But when he went to the middle window, he was surprised to see his cigarette there. That's very strange. I know that I was standing by the window on the right last night. He thought. Then he left his room to go downstairs for breakfast and saw a man's shoes outside number 13. He looked at the door, but now the number was 14. I don't usually make mistakes. Anderson thought. But I've made three mistakes in 12 hours. Anderson decided to think no more about it. He went back to the library, and he studied hard all day. He read some more about Nicholas Franken and learned that the man suddenly went away. But then he could find nothing more about him. What happened to this strange man? Did he die suddenly? Anderson thought. That evening at dinner, Anderson saw the landlord and remembered to ask his question. Why do most hotels in Denmark not have a room number 13? He asked. The landlord laughed. People don't want to stay in room number 13 because the number 13 is unlucky. They say that it's better to sleep in the street than to stay in a room with that number. Then what do you use your number 13 for? Anderson asked. There isn't a room number 13, said the landlord. Anderson began to feel worried. Would you like to have a drink in my room when you've finished work? He asked. He wanted to show the landlord number 13. The landlord happily agreed to visit him at 10 o'clock and Anderson went upstairs to his room without looking at number 13. He wrote some letters and just before 10 o'clock he walked to the window. He could see the shadow of the man from number 14 on the opposite wall, but it was moving in a strange way, like he was dancing. The man from number 14 is acting very strangely. Anderson thought. Why is he dancing? Then Anderson heard the landlord at his door. The landlord looked surprised when he saw the room, but he said nothing. Anderson gave him a drink and they began to talk. But after a few minutes, they heard a terrible noise. Someone was singing, but it did not sound like normal singing. The landlord's mouth was open. He looked afraid. What's the matter with Mr. Jensen in number 14? He said. Why is he making that noise? Anderson did not have time to answer because Mr. Jensen came into the room, looking very angry. Please stop that noise. He said, but the horrible singing got louder, and he could see that it did not come from Anderson or the landlord. Where is it? Who is it? cried Jensen. His face was white. The landlord was holding the arms of the chair. He could not speak. Then the singing stopped, and the singer laughed. After that, it was quiet. What is happening, landlord? Who is making that noise? Said Jensen. I don't know, but I never want to hear a noise like that again. Answered the landlord. We must do something. Said Anderson. Let's all go and look at the next room. But that's Mr. Jensen's room, and he is here. Said the landlord. Mr. Anderson is right. We must go and see said Jensen. They took a walking stick and an umbrella, and they left the room. It was very quiet in the corridor outside, but there was a light under the door of the next room. Jensen tried to turn the handle. I can't turn it, he said. Landlord, go and get your strongest servant and bring something to open the door. The landlord was very happy to go downstairs while the other two men waited outside the door. It is number 13, you see, said Anderson, looking at the door. Yes, there is your door, 
And there is mine, said Jensen. My room has three windows in the day, said Anderson. But there are only two windows at night because my room gets smaller. My room is the same, said Jensen. He had his back to the door when suddenly it opened. A horrible arm with long gray hair on it came out and its fingers moved towards Jensen's neck. Anderson shouted and quickly pulled Jensen away. The door closed and they heard a quiet laugh. Jensen did not see anything, but he was very frightened. Let's go together to one of our rooms, he said. I don't want to be on my own. But just then the landlord came back. The strong man with him was carrying a heavy metal bar. When Anderson told them about the horrible arm, both the landlord and his servant went white. What am I going to do? cried the landlord. I have to do something or no guests will ever want to come to my hotel. Is it normal for Danish men to be this frightened? said Anderson. Remember, there are four of us and one of him. Anderson's words helped. Without waiting any longer, the servant hit the door hard with his metal bar. But nothing happened. The door did not break and the heavy metal bar made only a soft noise. When the other three men looked, they saw only a wall. The door was gone. Room number 13 was gone. The four men looked at the wall. Then the landlord said, Mr. Anderson and Mr. Jensen, Maybe you would like a room with two beds tonight. The landlord was right. They did not want to be on their own. The next morning, the four men met in number 12. The landlord wanted to look under the floor near the wall between number 12 and 14. Maybe you think the bones of Nicholas Franken were there. But no, there was just a small metal box. Inside, there was a piece of paper with some strange writing on it. Was this the answer to the mystery of room number 13? But nobody could understand the writing. They did not know the language or how to read it. Anderson took the box and the paper to the library in Viberg, and the librarian kept them there. My cousin did not tell me this story until a few months later. He was visiting UPS in Sweden because he wanted to study old papers there, and I was with him. One day, we were together in the library. I was reading an old paper, and I said, laughing, Listen to this. Hundreds of years ago, a young student here sold his soul to the devil. But Anderson did not laugh. He was angry. Why did he do that? That's a really dangerous thing to do. Didn't the young man know that? And then my cousin told me about his visit to the Golden Lion in Viberg, in the mystery of room number 13. There was magic in the Golden Lion Hotel because hundreds of years ago, it was Nicholas Franken's house. Anderson told me, Franken's ghost stayed in the house because he sold his soul to the devil.